Some of you have slugs that are the size of my thumb. These are my big slugs here. Gross little guys. And a real pain. Luckily, where they're headed is almost empty anyway. Let's get rid of them. Hi there, Perflint Girl here. Uh, I'm gonna do a, a quick end of August uh, garden tour this morning. I think we'll do just a real quick look at some of the things that are are doing really well and we won't go through every bed because I've been showing you a lot of the garden this month as uh, there's lots of harvesting and that happening. It's a little bit early um, in August yet. It's the 20, 22nd of August right now. Um, so we still have about a week left. But uh, I wanted to come in and give you a look around uh, what's happening at the end of August because I'll be busy for the next week and a half or so as I'm getting two kids ready to go off to university in separate directions and it's going to be busy around my house. So I'm not sure I'll be able to get out and do a, a good video for you. So hopefully I can get that done for you today. So let's come. We'll start here at the uh, melon patch and give you an update on how that's going. This is my Minnesota midget melons over here. Uh, this is where I started to show you the melons. Uh, I don't know, what was that about two weeks ago now? Three weeks ago maybe? And uh, this was the one I was kind of looking at. And I've socked it up to try and keep it from slipping the vine. And uh, I don't know how well you'll be able to tell, but it's starting to change color and net up. Let's see if I can get this one up here without breaking it off. There's another vine in the way, but hopefully you can see the two of them. Oops, two of them there, and see the difference. So they start off real green and kind of stripy, and then it is getting a lighter, lighter green and getting some brown. And hopefully you can see the detail there on the kind of netting starting. The uh, that bottom blossom point is still still solid but I feel like it's starting to soften up a little bit and at the point here it does look like it's it's kind of starting to dry up there where it connects to the vine so I feel like it's only going to be a few days and this will be ready it doesn't have the uh, the scent yet of the musk melon so I'm going to put it back in this little stocking hammock I've made for it here um, just to try and support it. It's not real heavy, but I've had some sources say that they, they'll just fall right off the vine when you grow them on a trellis. Um, uh, some of my viewers here have said, no, they've never had that happen. So some of mine are put in a little stocking like that and some of them are not. And this is the first year I've had any amount of melons, well, any melons actually grow on this plant. I've tried it for many years. So I don't want to risk losing them, but I'm experimenting with both things just to see what works. So I have another one in a stocking down here. It's a lot smaller, much less mature. The one I was just comparing it to, lots of littles that unless we have a really good extended fall, I don't think these will, uh, will mature, but I've left them on and I'm not sure. I've cut some off to put energy to the, the ones that are growing and I've left some on. So. There are a few different plants in here, so these aren't coming all off the same plants. There's another one back here. I don't know if I mentioned that. And I have one with a lot of melons all growing together here, but I'm trying to find the vine. Yeah, this is a, a Minnesota midget as well. And it has some netting on it and it's getting to be a good size as well. It's sitting in the pot here, but I've kind of tried to put it up on the vine so it's not sitting right in the mud. Big spider keeps building a web on it though. So the next melons we'll look at are sweet Siberian melons. So they're actually in between the Minnesota midget and the sweet Siberian there's a pot of um, moon and stars watermelon. Uh, but the sweet Siberian plant is on the other side of the moon and stars and it seems to be 
moved its way over here to create its uh, watermelon. And I have it tied off to the trellis there. And there's the melon, watermelon in there. So it's looking to be a good size. And then I have another one down here. And it's even larger. It's a good handful. And there it is, nice color on it. So I'm just waiting. Um, there's little tendrils on the, on the vine. It should brown off when they're ready. And then there's one more moon and um, sweet Siberian over here. And it's just down in its little hammock thing too far, I think, but it's a good handful as well. But I can't, I don't think I pull it out without um, disturbing it too much. So I'll just leave it in there right now. But uh, it's, it's been growing quite a bit. If you recall, any that I showed you before of these were quite small before. They've really grown a lot. This is the moon and stars that I have here. And uh, it's really grown big. I used, it used to be like the size of these sweet Siberian. And now I can barely get my hand around the bottom of it. So I'll see if I can get you a better look at it here. So there it is. Oh, look, I haven't even looked at it in a few days. And look at that. Hopefully that's picking up on the camera for you. But this is a moon and stars melon. Gets these little yellow spots. And those are the stars. And they're supposed to get one big spot that's the moon. I don't see that anywhere on it. I don't want to manipulate it too much, but definitely is getting those little spots. It's kind of misshapen. I'm not sure why. I can't remember if it was maybe stuck in the trellis when it was smaller. I don't remember pulling it out, but um, it's kind of oddly shaped here. Let's see if I can get it back in this little stocking. But it's quite a few pounds now. It's looking really good. But again, that little tendril that's closest to it off the vine is still very green. And uh, I don't think it's quite ready yet, but it's putting a lot of pressure on this, this trellis string here to hold it up. So we'll see how well this does. Maybe I'll have to bring a, a two by four or something in here to, to give it some support, I don't know. Pretty impressed with that though, I really hope so how fast it's growing, I think like I'm gonna get get a mature melon off of this. We still have about three weeks until our average first frost, so really looking forward to this one. I think I could get it there. I'll turn to the other side of the, the trellis and see what's happening over there. So up here, this is at the very top of the trellis. This is the early early Canada improved. And um, this is about the size I've ever gotten them to. This is the variety I've been trying to grow the longest. And uh, I've never been able to quite get one to a mature watermelon, but I think being that it's at this size now, uh, toward, and we're not quite at the end of August yet, I'm really hoping that uh, I should be able to get a, a mature watermelon off of this. Uh, one of the things that tends to take them is the squirrels tend to start to come around my yard this time of year and uh, they're usually laying on the ground so the squirrels can get them. Being way up here, hopefully not, but I mean the squirrel does come through this tree, so with that stocking on though it should help protect it. I had a scaly bark watermelon in this pot here, but it just rotted off. I think just being in that situation, this is on the north side of the trellis, and um, I think just between the gladiolus and the other two melon plants, it was just getting too much shade and uh, just rotted off. So I have nothing, nothing growing there other than the gladioli. Um, you might also notice that my, some of my vines are looking pretty rough. They've had some powdery mildew. And so that's why there's so few leaves on them as I've been trimming the leaves off. So over here is the last melon we'll look at. So this is Tip Top Melon, and uh, I've tried to grow it. I, I think I tried to grow it last year. This might be the first year I'm growing it. 
have to look back at my notes. Um, but it's really coming along. It's not getting um, a huge size. And I keep forgetting to look up how big it's going to get. But it's definitely got, has a lot of netting coming on it. The uh, blossom spot is still quite firm. And it's not doing that thing like the, uh, the Minnesota Midget is doing around the stem there. So I don't think it's quite ready to slip the vine yet. But it's uh, definitely getting netted and looking like more of a mature melon here. And there's quite a few more on this plant. They won't show in the camera. There's some smaller, smaller like this. But then I'll show you there's a few, I don't know, kind of a handful of size melons on here as well. So I don't know, I might, I'll get, I'm sure I'll get this one anyways. I might get a couple more. These I little ones, I don't think will mature in time, but you never quite know. And the plant seems to be dealing well with this amount on it. So I'm letting it go. So that's how the, uh, the melon trellis is doing. Let's uh, go see the rest of the garden. I have uh, some fabric raised bed I want to stop at on the way to the main garden. There's my beans and onions. These are perennial onions, that's why I'm letting them go to seed. I've pulled out some of my beans. We just haven't been enjoying the beans this year. So I have still my black turtle beans that I'm letting mature. I'll save those dried. My pole beans I'm going to save and dry as well. Uh, but this is the bed I wanted to show you here. This bed was full of peas before. And now I've planted it full of beets and turnips and some lettuce and spinach and I think that's everything these little covers don't want to come off so I had to put this cover on because oh there's another slug well it must be keeping the slugs out um but the birds once the green started to come up the birds were just in here just wanting to to go at it so I think they actually took some of my my uh, turnips out uh, but that's what happened this spring is the birds pecked out all my beets and they're eating my turnips and it was just a disaster and I didn't get a lot of that stuff I didn't get any of that I might have a few turnips going out in one of my raised beds but uh, they didn't look too good so, and I was, you know, over the heat of the summer, the lettuces and spinach and that kind of die back. So it's starting to get towards the cool end of things. So I thought I could try and replant some of that. Now we had the, uh, we had a little neighbor dog over for a play date and he's still a puppy and he took a little romp in here before I had the netting up. So you'll notice a few, a few little divots in here and that's okay. Not a big deal. But uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick scan through here so you can see, see how things are going. I think it's been a week and a half. I'll look. I have the date. I'll look it up and let you know when I planted these. But it might be two weeks now. So I have a variety of beets in the first four squares of this, this area here. There are the odd little pea plant. You see one right there. It must be from dropped seeds and I just uh, let them keep coming up. So this is turnips over here and you can see before I got the cover on I had a lot of flea beetles starting to get at these too. I can see the odd flea beetle in here still but the net should help um, reduce the numbers of those. And nice little puppy paw prints so not a big deal. We don't eat a lot of turnips and that seems to be where he mostly was so I'm not too worried about it. And then my lettuces, again, I think these here maybe just had too much flea beetle on it before I got the net on. I didn't realize they were over here so bad before I netted them. And then I can't get the net to lift up. There's some spinach and things back there. So the net really is a good idea. Between the, the birds and the, the flea beetles and whatnot. There's an autumn frost squash. A few of those coming along. Quick run by the uh, 
peppers and tomatoes. We've looked at those a lot. I'm not going to spend time on them. It's taken a while for my Black Beauty eggplants to uh, start producing, but they're definitely coming along. This, uh, this broccoli is a real attractant to some of those sea beetles. Corn is growing. I'm not sure what I'm going to get out of it. It tasseled up before the ears had really started and lost, I think, a lot of the pollen. So I'm not really having high hopes for the corn. The ears do look like they're developing, but I'm not sure what's going to happen there. East Elite squash is coming along. I still don't think I have anything but male flowers on this uh, Rouge Vite de Tahamp. Um, squash. I was really looking forward to that one, so I'm quite disappointed. Had a lot of powdery mildew through here too, so I've done a lot of pruning and trimming. I don't think there's anything on the cougar pumpkin. There's a Casper pumpkin in there. There's a celebration squash. I have several, several of those coming along. And again, I can't remember what this variety is here. The new rocket pumpkin. I don't think I have, like, I don't even think that plant's flowering. It's so weird, and it's a healthy plant. There's my other tomatoes and peppers, looking great. Cucumbers, I could pick, I could pick cucumbers every single day if I wanted. My apple tree is loaded with apples. You'll see little bags hanging on some of them. I'm just trying to hope some of them stay protected from the wasps that like to come in here and eat my apples, um, so I was just giving that a try. But they're starting to blush and look good. These, I believe, this is the best year I've had for having apples off it, but I believe um, these mature in the first little part of September. It's looking really good. It has dropped a few, so I've tried uh, wrapping them in newspaper. I've read that you can do that, and they ripen for some of the later varieties, so we'll see. Uh, that is my sweet meat squash and there are some squash hanging on the plant at the top there. There's one out in the hole, you can see one there and one oops, over that direction. Um, some of my squash has gone over into the neighbor's yard and luckily I have great neighbors because they're like, no, that's great, leave it there. So I'm not sure if they're getting any squash off of it. Hopefully they're getting something for their troubles there. I offered to prune it out. They said, nope, just leave it. Um, my potato bed is coming to the end of its life. I haven't really, I've done a little bit of digging around here, taking a few new potatoes, but haven't done much. So I'm gonna have to do a big emptying of that pretty soon. This is my renegade pumpkins in here as well. And I hope you can see that one there. And I have a couple down on the ground down here. There's one in there. One over there, so I just have to be careful when I'm coming through and I'm worried the dog's going to knock those two as well, but so far they've been good. Uh, I started cleaning out some of these brassicas back here. So I had a bunch of kale in the back behind the, that celery and I had a bunch of kale in there. I've taken that all out. It was just completely eaten by worms. I haven't done any spraying with BT or anything this year. So if it wasn't netted, it was open to the cabbage moth and everything uh, as far as the brassicas are. Uh, there's a couple of kohlrabi left that seem to be just a little bit smaller and behind when I pulled the first few. Now they're getting more light, so they're they're developing better. My Brussels sprouts are really just doing like nothing. Uh, so I'm not sure what to do. I think I tipped a couple of them to try and develop that. Um, but they're just not doing anything. There's some more broccoli in here that were put out as late starts and they're just starting to to flower there. So her head up. Uh, so there's a little bit of lettuce I didn't even realize was in there till I was digging around the other day. It's looking a little rough but let it go. And the cabbage, we've been eating the cabbage out of here. I just pulled a small one. It looked awful because there's actually the neighbor has a willow tree above me and if anyone knows what does this to a willow tree, I swear it's getting worse every year this one. It drops these leaves all over my garden and I'm not sure if I should be concerned about that, if they should be concerned about that. But anyway, um, 
So yeah, that one looked terrible. I think from the leaves not sitting on it, getting, I think got a little sun scorched, but I took it and cleaned it up and uh, it's made a nice coleslaw. And I have a few more heads left. These red mammoth red rock, they're heading. And I mean, they're the longest season cabbages that I have, but they're so riddled with holes. And this head is like rock solid already. And it's that big. And this one is quite firm as well. Not big, so I don't know. I'm not too impressed with these. I mean, they're supposed to be more resistant to the moths and that. This could be slug damage, but I don't know. I don't know if they're worth it. So here's my cauliflower and broccoli bed, and you may notice, of course, that I have a big towel on it. Uh, there's a great big head of uh, cauliflower under there, and I just, it's ready to pick, but I wasn't ready to pick it yesterday, so I just threw that towel over to protect it. Getting quite hot, though. Luckily, it was overcast. Um, but uh, I'm going to pick that today so you can see it. And I think there's some broccoli in there to be picked. So I'm going to open this up, and we'll have a look around. So this is a graffiti cauliflower in here. And it is massive. I don't know when grow cauliflower this big. So I'm quite excited to see it. My daughter eats a lot of cauliflower and uh, I actually had to buy her a head of cauliflower the other day because I just was like, I had a week where I just didn't have any and she was just going into withdrawal. So um, yeah, I'm really happy to see this big cauliflower here. I'll be able to have lots to, to give her some fresh because that's how she loves it and I'll be able to blanch some and put it in the freezer for this winter. So let's get this harvested. Oh, I can feel a slimy, slimy spot. So these nets do great at keeping the cabbage moths off, but I still find the odd slug, and I think there must have been a slug in here at some point. I don't see it right now. That is a gorgeous head of cauliflower. Look at that graffiti cauliflower. I love it. Um, this is a great variety. It tastes just the same as any white cauliflower that you would grow. It's a very nice flavored cauliflower. Um, I've got a spider on me. Nice flavored, uh, nice mild cauliflower. Great flavor to it. It looks kind of fun. Uh, has some extra bit of keratin in it for you, so that's always a good thing. And it blanches and freezes well. When you cook it, it will um, lose some of its color but it does still keep some, but it will color your cooking water. Um, and I've found if I cook it with um, lighter colored things, it can discolor them a little bit. So that's something to know about, but it stores well. Um, and it seems much less susceptible. Like I probably don't really need to grow these under nets in the same way uh, that you would your white cauliflower and it also doesn't seem to need the blanching or like covering up as much But because it was supposed to be in the high 30s yesterday, and it was supposed to be really sunny I had covered this just to be careful because I mean I didn't want to risk this beauty, but uh, Yeah, I'm really happy with that cauliflower and I think we've been in the 30s. I thought these all might bolt on me um, But no, it's doing well so I'm going to put this to the side and I have some broccoli to harvest and then we'll look at the other side. I don't know how much is over there to, to get, but we'll have a look over there as well. It looks like there's several bits of broccoli here to uh, get. I think most of them are side shoots. I think I've harvested the main head out of most, if not all, of the broccoli that's in this bed. Um, so I'm just going to go through and grab those quick. So most of these plants now give me their main head and uh, I just have a couple like this right here. Nope, oh, that's got its main head. So there's a couple in here that are, are younger plants. So uh, in this week, I'll probably come through and take out any of these plants that have already given me a main head and side shoots. I'll have to watch because this one still has a few side shoots on it here. Um, 
but I'll take out most of those that have given me some of that just to, to make room for these couple of younger plants that are still trying to develop in here. Because these older ones have probably done most of what they're gonna give me now. A lot of them I've collected side shoots off of twice now. So I think they're probably close to the end and I could just trim them back, get them out of the way. So I'm gonna flip this netting over to this side now and we'll go have a look on the other side. It looks like there's more broccoli over there for sure. I don't think there's any more cauliflower. Okay, so this side, I have what I believe is a cheddar. No, I think this is a an early snowball. I don't know, the leaves look kind of yellow, so what makes me think it's a cheddar. Um, I think the rest are all early snowball in here, cauliflower, and this one is as well. They're just starting to form heads. Um, leaves that are sticking out here the way. I'm not sure how well these two are going to do. They're looking a little rough and they might not be like in this heat. Um, but I'll leave them and see where they get with that. It is supposed to cool down a little bit into the mid to high 20s uh, later on this week. Or, yeah, later on this week. So we should be, that should help a little bit with these. Um, down here in the broccoli, I have one more good head, and then I think I have a couple that have blown here. So I'll bring you in, you can have a look at those. Apparently I missed these little broccoli over here. And I've been looking through, and this is opened up. The flowers have really opened on it. I think, I'll take it in. It might still taste okay. It might, uh, have a bite to it that we don't want, but I'll take them and, and see. But they look like they've maybe gone too far. A couple more. And then I have one nice head here, and it's uh, starting to kind of, I might be able to leave this longer, but it's opening up, so I'm gonna take it. I think that'll be good there still. And I think that's everything to harvest in here right now. So that's a nice little harvest uh, to be getting at the end of August here. Here in Saskatchewan, Canada, we can be growing our brassicas uh, all year long. I do find though, um, this is that one little head of bro little. Yeah, I guess it's a head of broccoli um, that was over by the eggplant and it's very exposed to the late day sun. Um, there's no protection from that. Mosquitoes on me. And no protection from that and uh, also it's exposed to the bugs. So you can see it's just not as nice of broccoli and it's also a different variety. I think these two are the same. I think these are both green magic. I'm not sure. But like this, I'm guessing this little bit of broccoli probably isn't going to taste very good. I have higher hopes that this that's kind of bolted a little bit out of my main bed probably tastes better than this that's been exposed to having the sun just baking down on it like this. Um, the netting also helps to protect from the sun a little bit. Even though it's clear and open, it does just provide just a tiny, you know, hair of shade. And then I have the shed right here. Um, and I have some big staking tomatoes on the other side. So this bed where I took most of my broccoli and cauliflower out of is protected from um, some of the strongest sun of the day, the most intense sun of the day, which makes a huge difference. Um, but being that we rarely get up to 40 Celsius here uh, in Saskatchewan, Canada, we can still be growing these uh, brassicas with just that little bit of protection like that all year, all season long. So that's really nice. Um, it's a great way to fill the freezer. So if I looked around, I know I could be getting some more cucumbers. I could be picking tomatoes. I could be picking peppers right now, celery, onions. That's all, all stuff that I'm taking out of here almost daily. But these were the things that I really wanted to get out and uh, get processed today. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed having a little look around the garden while I did that. And uh, hopefully I'll have really good update on those uh, melons as they grow and develop and we'll be able to do a little taste test hopefully in a few weeks and see what they turned into. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.